Hey, what's up my fellow reefers? This is Fragbox TV, March here, and I'm gonna do a quick update on the cheapest five gallon nano reef tank. Okay, so biggest change we made. I was not too impressed with that light that we got off Amazon. So we've changed it to the Aquanite from Spectra Aquanite V2. I can, actually, what do you mean I can? We have done other videos on this one before. Sorry, yeah, just have to check. So we have done other videos on this one before. Um, if you have one or you wanna know how to program one, we have a video on that. And I think we did one as well on Dylan's Fusion 20 about the PAR reading. So for quite an inexpensive light, it's around 100 bucks. The PAR is actually really, really impressive. Tia stole our PAR meter, so I can't do uh, a review of it right now, but it'd be kind of cool to see what we're getting, you know, here on the sand bed, higher up, what the corals are getting. So that's the biggest change with the tank. So we were sitting at $178 for this entire setup. If you've been following it as we've done it, so that included the tank, the rock, the sand, the filter, the original light, uh, the heater, everything that we needed to get it up and running was 178 Canadian dollars, 180 bucks. Okay, so now with this new light running, that brings our new total cost for this tank to 270 bucks. It looks a lot cleaner though. I like it a lot more than the other one. I just wasn't too impressed with the color spectrum coming out of that J-Hill light. It was really, really white for my liking. There was no timers. Um, you couldn't control it. This just looks a lot sleeker. The corals look a lot happier. And so the next big change is we swapped out the rock that was over here. I just couldn't stand the shape. We had these nice, really, really purple... Um, older pieces of live rock just kicking around so we swapped that one out so it looks kind of funky we got this sort of well-established purple rock over here and then this much newer white marker rock but we should expect this one to look like this pretty soon and then corals are going to cover it anyway so you're not going to really see the rock so I'll kind of just give you a rundown of what we threw in here so this is what Tia calls the invasive rock because we have some Xenia this one isn't open today he's usually usually open and then we've gone ahead and added another one. It's kind of a different color. They're both pulsing Xenia. This one's got more of a pink issue, and this one kind of more purple. Some Kenya tree, and some pretty cool Indonesian branching frog spawn. And then down beside him over here, this is a chalice coral. It's a Hollywood stunner, so it's going to plate out. And then some green star polyps. So this stuff, you can see it's been about a week. It's already attached uh, right there to the rock. So it took about a week and it's starting to grow that way. And you know what? That was under the other light. It's showing this is all new growth, all sort of uh, in here. So, you know, if I gave that other light more of a shot, you know, it, it was working. The part, the par was there. The numbers were there. Just I couldn't stand the spectrum. So we swapped it out. This is a discosoma mushroom. So it's called an afterburner. And he doesn't look too happy today. We added it yesterday. He should be about triple the size. So that's pretty normal when you add corals. They need a couple days to puff up and look... Um, how they're supposed to look and then over on this side we added some cap and crunch zoas mixed in with some other ones oh looks like we got our first hitchhiker some little astrina starfish so that's why t is calling this the um the invasive rock because it's mushrooms xenia zoas more xenia and up here on top a little kenya tree and some gsp so these are all soft corals that are known to grow incredibly fast and it's going to be pretty cool to see how long it takes for them to just basically engulf this entire rock. They're all easy to keep and they're all soft with the exception of the uh, the frog spawn up here and the chalice, but they should all be able to grow and touch into one sort of nice soft coral garden. So that's the first rock. This is our little neon goby over here. Um, we actually have some of these arriving next week. We got some new fish coming in. Maybe we can do a giveaway if you guys want to help us name this fish. We'll pick a name and if you live locally here in the greater Toronto area and you want to drive to the store, we'll, uh, we'll give away one of these fish next week when we get one in. So just help us name our, our blue, our neon blue nano goby. On this one, we've added some crap. What are you called? What's wrong with me? Matt, what are these called? Uh, I need a coffee. Uh, oh my God. You too? Clove polyps. polyps. Clove polyps. He didn't get it either. Okay, rainbow clove polyps. So this maybe should have gone over here on this rock because they do grow quite fast but uh, I don't know why Tia put them down there that's uh, a little bit too little light and over here we have another mushroom Rhodactis so we're doing mostly soft corals in this tank easy to keep stuff we're not really planning on dosing you know maybe water change every two weeks 
This is a trumpet coral. And here we decided we're going to do sort of a little Acan garden. So this is a nice purple green Acan Lordawensis. But he's kind of hard to see because the rock is purple and sort of green and he's purple and sort of green. So, oh, you know what I just realized? Sidetrack. This is my sidetrack of the video. Um, we're finally getting a nice shimmer. So on the other light, not as nice. This one, it's more in person than what the camera's showing off, but it is a, a nice natural looking shimmer to this LED light. Up here we have a, another Kenya tree. Says, I love Kenya tree. And here's a hammer coral, which doesn't look too good right now. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And down here we've added some suspicularia. So this is like Xenia's long tentacle cousin. When this guy grows and happies, they can get like easy six, seven, eight inches. He's going to reach up and they grow not, not as fast as Xenia, not as invasive, but it's like his taller cousin. So what was I saying about the hammers? Yeah, the hammer. And the froggy, they don't look too great to me. Um, this is definitely, I'm going to say too little flow. They're going to need more flow than that if we want them to thrive. You see he's like barely moving. Let me show you examples of frog spawn in another tank. Okay, maybe not the best example, but the Nero's are, Nero 5s are on a lower setting right now, but they're moving a little bit more. These ones have been here for a while, but you can just see how much puffier and open they are. This is Tia's Evo here. So everything in her tank does really well. You can just see the frog spawn a little bit more movement. And especially the hammers here, how they're kind of moving in the flow. So, yeah, I think in that tank it's, it's too low. Here's one more example of our hammer garden in this larger tank here. You can see, this is what I call like lightly dancing. So you want them to sort of salsa, merengue, bachata, whatever you call it. You just want them moving a little bit more than what you see in that tank. So I guess that means we're going to need a small power head. Yeah, you can see here, definitely not enough flow. So when they don't get enough flow, LPS, Euphilias, they kind of flop over. And then I find they're very prone to uh, bacterial infections and they usually don't last too long. I would have expected to see them uh, much more open today than this. Shit. I'm just gonna have to put a small, oh, uh, it's so small. Why don't we... Maybe. I'm thinking one of these. These are tiny. This is kind of one of the cool things of owning a reef store. You just go to the shelf and pick something up. So you know what's gonna happen? Yeah. Someone's gonna walk in now looking for this. The universe is funny. As soon as this is our last one, one. I'm gonna open it. Yeah, but I think it's more of a pump. Yeah, but I mean, such a tiny tank, you know, you're just trying to. Just something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone's gonna come in this afternoon looking oh, for this watch. 100%. This always happens. Let's try this out. I didn't mean for this to be an unboxing or a V video. I'm not too impressed. Uh, hi, Dor. Not too impressed with this design here. This stupid little thing goes into this stupid little thing and doesn't fit. I don't know. Let me try and figure this out. Not too impressed. Hold on. Okay, I think that's it. This stupid thing goes in here. I was swearing a lot off camera. I was swearing a lot, a lot. Like this just became a Trailer Park Boys episode, if you know what that is. But I got it on. Yeah, not too impressed with that design. But let's see how the how the pump works in the smaller tank. Okay, sorry, Hydor, Coralia. I take it back. Um, not so bad. Actually, quite good. It seems like it's going to be the perfect amount of flow. It's a little dusty or dirty right now. It's picking up a little bit of the sand but I think it's gonna be bang on. We'll, we'll cover it next week when we do another video update on the cheapest reef tank. But I guess we just added another 30 bucks to our, our total price here. I was trying to get away without using one. I was hoping that the hang on the back filter here was gonna be enough filter, um, enough uh, flow for the tank because as it pours back in, it naturally moves the water. But I think if we're gonna do LPS corals or stuff, it's just, it's just not gonna work. It's kind of unsightly. You know, it looked cooler without it. And it does have a slight, slight, slight hum. And it may be louder than I'm hearing because I'm going deaf. So, but not as bad as I thought. I got a little frustrated. I think that's it for today's video. We got some corals. We have a new light. We got another little pump running. Price of the tank has jumped up a bit. So now we're sitting at, with the power head, $2.99. I'm not going to include the cost of the corals in building the tank because it's maybe a little bit arbitrary depends where you live maybe you have some friends in the hobby maybe you got another tank maybe you get them on a deal um so i'm just i'm just going to stop there i don't think we need any more equipment this thing cost us to look like this 299 canadian dollars to get a five gallon saltwater reef tank up and running but that's it for today's video guys if you got any questions comments you know you can always um, message us below or i'll leave all our contact info at the end of the video you can give us a call email us you know we love talking about this stuff but thanks for watching and this is fragbox tv